Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip. And today we're going to be looking at how you can create a spring in Blender. So let's go in and uh, just get started. So for that, we're going to add a plane, shift A, plane, and uh, we only need one vertex as we're going to be using the screw modifier and uh, only one vertex is enough for that to work. So let's go into edit mode and then select, just deselect one vertex like this and then delete the rest of them uh, using X. And uh, with only this vertex, uh, we can add the screw modifier, uh, which is under here, generate screw. And I uh, can see it starts screw or rotating uh, the, mod the vertex around, making duplicates of it. And uh, if you increase the screw value, you can see we get this spring-like shape. Now we can increase the angle to make it more rounded but you can see now it's becoming more segmented to make it more smooth or more rounded we just need to increase uh, the steps here but so we can also just leave the angle to 360 and uh, reduce the steps to 16 and just increase other uh, iterations like that and you have your spring uh, right now it doesn't have any thickness to it so let's add let's apply this screw modifier so that we are remaining with the base mesh and uh, convert this mesh into a curve object and the reason we are curved, we are uh, converting it to a curve object is so that we can add uh, the bevel option here so that we so that you can go to the bevel uh, sorry to the curve data here and uh, under geometry you can increase the depth the bevel depth to give this some thickness so you can even apply a new material here let's go to the loop dev settings here and uh, give this a metallic look like so you can even turn on bound caps we should Okay, I don't think it does it there. I think it should be here, fill cups. But uh, it doesn't seem to be filling cups, but uh, that's okay, we don't need them. But, uh, let's just increase the depth <coughs> even further, just for just one more time. Now, if you are, you want to be a bit fancy, you can add a grind texture for the roughness to make uh, the reflections a, a bit rough. So you can go on to Google and search for, for some grunge maps there and uh, see what you can use. So it doesn't look really well mapped, so I'm just going to hit Ctrl T. Uh, make sure you have the node the node wrangler add-on enabled here to have that option of hitting just D of hitting shift D to add in these extra nodes uh, for the geometry mapping. So let's change this to object mapping and uh, change this to box so that we don't have to use unwrap this want the reflections to be a bit rough and uh, actually this is supposed to be in the roughness not the metallic so that we have something like that and then now after that we can convert this into a mesh oh i want to see if i can animate this i uh, rig this if i should rig this i don't know i'm seeing an amateur modifier i don't think i've seen this before Let's see if we can rig this. I haven't tried this out in my tests, so yeah, it may not work out as I expect it to work. Because I don't think uh, uh, these curves can be deformed by amateurs, but let's see. Control P. Uh, control P. Deform. And let's see if that works. Interesting. It seems to work. So let's read this and see how, what we can get. So it's going to duplicate another bone here. And just go into edit mode for the bone. Shift D. Like this. And then shift D. Something like this. And now uh, we can select this bone, go to pause mode, and uh, go to amateur our open constraints and add a stretch to constraint which should be under da, 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 stretch to 
can select this as a target and I think it's called bone 001 so let's put that as the target now when we move this you can see we get some bit of animation there the deformation is not uh, too perfect as uh, this loses structure but uh, yeah just wanted to show you if you're not doing too much uh, stretching if you're not going to stretch it this far it won't matter and there may be what you can do uh, let's see we have let's say we have a tire here I'm just thinking of this as we are going uh, I didn't test this out but I uh, can see how just to show you how you can the different ways you can use this so imagine this being a tire it that's it I'm just also going to extrude extrude this like that so that we can easily tell that the tear is rotating too small something like that so maybe being the, this being a tear and uh, let's make it a bit darker something like that this could be parented uh, to this bone here so say like this like this bone control P to bone so that now if we rotate this bone uh, this rotates just need to make sure that uh, we have this aligned with the bone itself and uh, uh, we can have this connected to this so let's see we can have this bone stretching bone parented to this control P but make sure you have keep offset turned on and now when we move this, you can see uh, this moves as well. And I think you can parent, I'm just experimenting here. So I think you can parent a bone to an empty. So let's see, is that possible? Let me see. So if I have an empty, yeah, I think you can. So if I have an empty like this, I'm just going to scale it up a bit uh, like that. I can, you can select this bone and under constraints, give it a child of parent child of uh, uh, constraint so if I select this I'm just going to turn off the scale hmm? uh, make sure you set inverse or clear inverse one of the two just make sure that just uh, makes makes it that uh, this doesn't change the scale of the objects or the position so let's see I need to first reset, I think, uh, this, this scale property here. Maybe if I want this to increase, I'll just increase the size like so. And uh, then you can re-add uh, the constraint. So I bring back the constraint. So I want the child of constraint. Select this as the constraint set inverse this one of the two has to reset uh, this but i'm not sure why it's not so let's see let's just take off the scale hmm. it's not working exactly as i thought but uh, let's just scale it back to position and then just go to the empty settings and reduce the size 
so that we end up with the same shape. And then what you can do is add, let's say you would have something like a ground here and uh, maybe a displacement with a displacement noise. Let's see, noise, noise, noise. Can I know that? I think clouds works better. Just reduce the strings. So what we want is some uneven ground like that. Something like that. Then with that, we can add, uh, I think it's called a const, it's a shrink wrap constraint, and uh, this would be the target object. So when we move this, you can see it just follows that, but uh, we need to offset the height just a bit so that this is barely touching, or the tire is barely touching the surface. Maybe something like that. So then uh, you would parent, let's see, you would parent you could have an, another object, another bone here. Shift D. Just parent this to this. Control P. Okay. And that would cause a few issues. But basically, what I want to do is uh, when we move. The, this entire object, which I think we can just parent to the armature to a single empty like this and control the entire setup with that control P. And I think we should also parent this to that. Now you see that uh, the show follows the contour of uh, the ground as we want it to and very very smoothly and uh, the shock just stays in position as you can see so then i think you can add uh, what is it called a, a track transformation this would be your target uh, to make the tire rotate uh, every time this moves forward. But uh, that's something we can do uh, next time uh, just to show you how to rotate the tire as this moves forward. Yeah, that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, and uh, that's your daily blender tip. See you in the next tutorial. Uh, so what I might want to announce today is that uh, we're going to be doing a live stream on my main channel, uh, uh, Top Channel 101, we're going to be making a low poly city. So if you are, if you want to watch that, uh, you can go to that channel, subscribe, uh, turn on the notification so that you are notified when that live stream uh, starts. Uh, but uh, yesterday we made this. And, uh, I've been making a lot of uh, live streams and uh, you can see some of the things we have been making. So. Uh, if you want to give, go over there and uh, watch that, uh, you can come around and uh, yeah, we'll be doing that. Anyway, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you.